I'm Spring Coulter, a career development specialist here at Chime. And thanks so much for joining us today for the Certified Digital Health um, Overview. I'm going to go ahead and turn things over to Ashley to get us started. Perfect. Thank you, Spring. Um, so yes, we will kind of walk through our Certified Digital Health Program, or, or CDH as we like to call it, uh, more as kind of a high-level overview of the program, getting into some of the logistics, and then open it up for Q&A as well. Um, so feel free to use the chat or unmute or anything like that if, if a question does kind of arise. Um, so we'll with that, we'll go ahead and kind of kick things off. Um, as you can see, our Certified Digital Health Program, what makes it very unique is there are three different levels for this. We have our professionals, our leaders, and our executives. So this program is really designed to meet the candidate where they are currently in their position and their experience but it also allows them to grow with the program. So if you start out at a lower tier, you can always work your way up through, you know, as you're moving in your career, through promotions, anything like that, we wanna be able to support you along the way as well. So this is a really great opportunity to get engaged and accelerate your career growth. Um, so part of the, you know, behind the, the scenes value, as far as, you know, why, CDH, what, you know, what is it for, um, for me, for my organization, for healthcare professionals in general, and it's really trying to really meet and fill that gap where we're seeing a lot of um, organizations, a lot of um, professionals um, being able to pursue that digital health as you, you know, as time has told us and, and especially as, as things have evolved over the years, recent years, um, is this digital health is really key to not only professionals working in, um, in those environments, but also even end users and patients and that level of, of um, expectedness um, and engagement. And so we're really trying to focus and build that or bridge that gap um, and bring a, a certification to all healthcare professionals that want to be certified in a digital health kind of landscape, knowing um, and getting recognized for their skills, but also if their career is kind of lending that way um, in that direction. Um, and this is just a, a quick kind of overview as far as growth and, and expansion that Chime has undergone. So I know that CDH is a newer certification program for us, but it's not our first rodeo as far as certification goes. Um, over the years, we've really tried to kind of break down the gap of um, the, the CIO IT kind of leaders and really be able to provide that to the um, where you are in your in your career. So if you might not hold that title, you might not hold that experience, which is kind of where CDH really grew is we wanted to kind of break down those uh, member borders and bring it to you and your organization. So CDH is a perfect opportunity for you but it's also a really great way to build, you know, team collaboration and um, understanding, um, bringing that new dynamic and, and making that healthy environment as far as leading the direction and making those changes. So who are CDH? Kind of hit a little bit more on this, um, but it's anyone that's really focused on serving in those healthcare communities. So it's anywhere from, you know, sales leads working within that technology environment, whether it's, you know, hardware, software, um, being able to understand that communication and that language um, within the provider setting. Um, and it's for your HR, it's for marketing, it's for your CFOs, your CEOs, anyone that really is looking to not only maybe freshen up on some of those components and skills, um, but to gain recognition, say, hey, I can sit in on those discussions. I actually know where I'm certified in, in this area or, you know, I've, I've been there, done that. I, I understand that, um, you know, the direction that you have to pursue in order to make things happen and make change happen. And then we'll talk a little bit about kind of ideal candidates as far as the different levels are concerned and then break it down a little bit more um, overall into each level. So this is kind of just a, a, a pathway, a visual pathway of how you can earn your certification, um, either as a professional leader or executive. So at that executive level, um, we're looking for that key experience. Um, so it's not the three years in healthcare, it's a three year or more as an executive, holding that position, 
walking through those um, meetings, making those determinations, really being the decision makers in the organization, um, or holding a former certification status as a CHCO, CFCHE, or CHISL. Um, and then membership as well can also kind of be that pathway into CDHE. For our mid-level careerists, these are kind of your one to three years um, in that maybe manager role, director role, someone that's not new, not fresh um, to the environment or the role, um, but now they have a team under them. They're starting to make um, uh, identify decisions and know who's involved, who the stakeholders are, um, making sure that they're working with clinicians and, and IT and, and bringing everyone into the fold. They don't quite have that seniority in their organization, but they're on their, their way there. And then you have your early careerists. Um, these can be as, as basic or, or minimal experience as maybe someone that had just graduated from a graduate level program. Um, we always ask for a minimum of that one year experience just so that they're familiar enough with the concepts, the terminology, the language, um, so that we're not you know, leading them on too astray, but um, that we're setting them up for success if they are to pursue a, a certification in digital health. So we'll start with our professional level. Um, this is just a kind of quick scope as far as you know what things to expect, as far as um, knowledge to be tested on, experience, um, exposure. We want them to make sure that they do have experience um, or at least knowledgeable um, and can speak to um, some of these areas. So as they go through the examination, it's going to be kind of minimal um, list. Uh, questions that are designed around health, uh, digital health, um, but with a little bit of dynamic uh, understanding as far as that foundational level. You know, do they understand? Have they maybe walked the walk? Um, making sure that we're meeting them where they are again. And then these are some kind of just examples of who you might see represented the, the candidates in the professional, um, from clinical professionals, biomed, um, HR, as I mentioned earlier, marketing and sales, anyone that's kind of what you would consider your entry level professional. What, what clinical profession uh, do you think are included in that? Let me go back. Um, so again, it comes down to that experience. We don't necessarily put you know, titles or anything as part of the make or break um, process into going into the certification, just because we don't want that to be a barrier if someone is or transitioning into um, a more digital um, aligned field. And so the clinical professionals you would see as not necessarily um, nurses, nurses would probably be more leader or exec. Um, depending on their role, on their title, on their experience within the, the organization. Um, but you might see, you know, some of, more of your technicians and more of your, um, you know, frontline kind of workers as far as, you know, what they've been exposed to. Are, are they part of decision-making um, meetings or organizations? Do they know kind of how everything is integrated together? And so, that's kind of where you would start as far as that goes. Now, if a person were to apply for maybe the professional level, but we notice in their application that they actually lean more towards being a leader within their organization, then we might recommend them um, maybe move into the leader program for their certification and vice versa. If they maybe apply for a leader or executive, they don't quite met, um, meet the mark as, as far as what we're looking for, then we would maybe recommend um, another maybe lower tier in the, the program as well, just because we, we want to make sure that we're setting them up for success and not necessarily putting them into a field that is kind of above their head or anything like that. Great question though, Randy. So some of the ways to get there are through our CHIME education track. We have a lot of different programs. We even have a certificate program um, that allows people to progress um, within their understanding and within their career. Um, and that would allow them um, privilege or, or eligibility into the professional program. Then we have a graduate level work or training. Like I said, it's you know it's that lower tier. So as long as they have that base level work um, and they, they understand the talk, then you know we'll kind of go from there. 
And then again, with that minimal one year experience, just so that we do make sure that they have enough footing under the belt. And the leader level, again, very similar kind of scope of knowledge, um, but it's taking it one more step up. Now these people, you know, have teams under them. They're starting to, you know, make some decisions. They're starting to support um, actions and, uh, and rolling things out. They know a little bit more about how everything is integrated together and working with partners, working with different stakeholders. And so they're gonna be a little bit more held accountable for um, more robust information and depth of knowledge. Again, this is not necessarily all inclusive, but these are some of the areas that you can see people may be applying for the leader level. Again, you're gonna have more of your kind of manager, director, um, even supervisor kind of roles within different and various departments. For leader level, um, Chime or A-Group membership could put you into this path um, by attending our Chime Bootcamp or Leadership Academy. And then again, that experience is key. So that one to three years uh, minimal in, in a healthcare leadership role. And then our executives is kind of self-explanatory. You know, they're the ones that are making the decisions. They're um, making the strategy align with the organization at large, um, understanding everything, every component, um, knowing how to work partnerships, knowing um, how to understand and develop relationships within uh, various stakeholders as well, um, reporting to the board, and, and they have just a, a, a more depth of uh, well-roundedness within the organization. So again, it's your kind of CFOs, CEOs, CIOs, anyone that's kind of in that, that holds that senior leadership. So again, not all encompassing, but this, these are maybe some of the folks that you would see in your organization that would definitely qualify for the executive level. And again, you know, we're, we're breaking down necessarily in, outside of IT to make sure that you know, our, our CFOs are talking the same language as us. They understand you know, the business needs as well as um, the, the financial aspect of everything, but they're understanding how everything is integrated together even on the clinical side. So this is the, the extent of you know, not necessarily limiting to positions or titles, but just making sure that they have a, a depth of understanding within the healthcare environment. Um, again, if they hold a CHCO, um, CFCHE, or CHISL certification uh, credential with us, that would qualify them for potentially the CDHE. Um, and again, it's going to be that experience. We just want to make sure that they are exposed to all these um, avenues of information so that when it comes to testing, it's not necessarily over their head, but uh, that they are held accountable at a higher level. And with that, uh, we'll kind of turn to logistics for the, the exam. So I will turn it over to Spring. Thank you so much, Ashley. In this portion of the presentation, we'll talk a little bit about the steps to certification. So we'll start off with enrollment and then how one would prepare for the, the certification and then um, how they would step into the examination. And then of course, maintaining the certification once they have obtained the, the designation. So this is just a overall um, process for the pro all programs, they should say for the CDH level. So um, completing the program enrollment, here you can see the description, the instructions and so forth um, included in the photo. This is for the professional leader as well as the executive. There are of course, what to Ashley's point, three specific levels and so, um, on the web page, you would just click which level um, you believe that you would fall into. However, sometimes um, individuals might believe that they fall into one level and they might actually go to the next level, or maybe they don't quite qualify for that level yet. So they would be at a level, um, I don't wanna necessarily use the word below, but they would be at the next tier. And so once they, um, once a candidate was to apply for the examination or for the program, I should say, they would then need to fill out an application. So the program enrollment comes to the certification department 
and then we will notify the potential candidate of their um, their status and provide them with the application process and so forth. Okay. So preparing for the examination, um, we have a number of different study materials. So starting out with the blueprint or the exam level blueprint, this is an overall outline of all of the information in which a candidate would successfully need to understand um, in order to pass the certification exam. The study materials also includes the reading materials, and these are the sources in which all of the questions have been derived from. We also have sample exams, so these are very short samples to test the knowledge, and I want to point out the feel for the exam because this isn't, the sample exams are, are samples. They're not exact sample or they're not exact exam questions, if you will. So it kind of provides an overall like, do I understand how the questions are going to be asked? Do I understand how the exam is going to kind of run? And then lastly, we have the gap assessment. Um, the gap assessment is, is a self-assessment to for you to specifically look at and say, where are my gaps? What is it that I need to study for that I feel would best benefit me? So the exam expectations, the exam consists of 125 multiple choice questions. You have two and a half hours to complete the exam. No materials or notes are permitted. It is online through or provided online through our online university. <clears throat> and you do obtain the results within one to two weeks. Um, one of the caveats that I do want to um, present is yes, you are given two and a half hours. There's a specific exam code that you do have to enter. And once you enter in that exam code, your timer, your timing starts immediately. Credential maintenance, so for the initial um, credential, you'll need 10 CEUs earned within the um, 12 months prior to the enrollment date, um, to the current date that is. <clears throat> Pass the exam, the application obviously needs to be complete as well as completing the enrollment fee. Once you obtain the designation for certification renewal, your cycle is every three years. In, during that cycle, you'll need 45 continuing education units with 12, or excuse me, with half, 22.5 coming from China University Education. And then there's also a renewal fee. And I just would like to point out as well, if you are, if you currently hold a certification, um, a former certification with CHIME, that your dates would actually be rolled into one. So you wouldn't necessarily have to renew your CHCL next year and then the following year renew your CDH. Those dates would align. So you would just be um, responsible for understanding one renewal period for those certifications. So with that, we will go ahead and open it up for any questions that might come in. Feel free to use the chat or come off mute and ask away. Well, I wanted to learn uh, more about the CD, CDH program because, <laughs> as you know, I've been involved with the certification for years, and uh, I haven't been very involved with the CDH program. So where, where did that come about? I mean, where did it come from? Absolutely. Um, so, you know, the purpose of CDH was really we were starting to, you know, have people knock at the door of, you know, I, I really love what Chime's doing, but I would never qualify as a Chime member. Um, and we started to notice that a lot within the membership side, um, as far as, you know, obtaining membership or, or education uh, for those seeking. And so we started to look outside necessarily of, you know, like, how can we build and, and really fill that gap, but also help prepare the future leaders, uh, help prepare the future CIOs and the future people that are gonna be running um, a lot of the industry. And so that's when we started to look beyond our borders and understand, you know, what, what is that territory? What, um, who is that audience? You know, what is that um, persona kind of that we're going after? And so as we started to do this through our education, you know, obviously certification was right there saying, well, how can we help support them as well, how can we help 
provide that level of recognition and, and help maybe get them into that next career opportunity, next promotion, anything like that. Um, and this is a really great way to start because it's not only providing that level of, yes, I know what I'm talking about because I've, you know, I know X, Y, and Z, and I've went through the rigorous um, you know, process of preparing for this exam and passing the exam. And so I can sit in on those discussions. I can be a part of that decision making, even if maybe my title doesn't allow me to. Now I can position myself a little bit better as far as where I want to go in my career. Um, it's also obviously built to kind of guide them. So it's not just a one and done, but if they are starting at a lower tier, it allows them, them growth. And so we're continually um, being able there to support them. As you know, credential maintenance, we require professional development. And so we wanna make sure that we're still pr um, promoting and supporting them through that um, journey as they're, they're moving in their career. Um, the other aspect to this is to really strengthen and bring teams together. Um, yes, it's an individual certification, but it allows you to strengthen and certify your team. So, you know, people above you, people below you, making sure that you're all speaking the same language, you're all on that kind of foundational understanding, you know how to approach things, you know how to, how in-depth relationships are and how change works within um, a setting within the healthcare industry and, and, and affects, you know, top tier all the way down to end user. And so we really want to bring strength to organizations as well as their teams are, are part of that process and succession planning as well. Are there a lot of uh, C-level folks going for the CDHE outside the, the CIO or the IT area? For example, CFO or COO, those types of folks? Uh, we haven't had those specific titles. Um, we have had more kind of on the medical side pursuing that. Um, but we, yes, we do have individuals actually at all three levels enrolled in those programs. Okay. Because I think for years we, we've had that um, that need for especially the professional and the leader level because we haven't had that in our certification suite. So absolutely, um, especially with the professional, um, that program actually kind of was built, you know, ground up. We um, made sure, you know, we were doing job analysis and sending out surveys, making sure that we were um, surveying that audience and knowing what what that was, you know, what their day-to-day -day responsibilities were so that we were holding them accountable for the right things. Um, and so there was a lot of, of groundwork, especially within that professional, because to Randy's point, you know, that's a little bit outside of our real house. We're used to, you know, the execs knowing, um, you know, how how that audience works and, and what they're expected to know and do. Um, and that, you know, as we kind of went outside, that's where you know it started to become a little rough. And so um, we definitely wanted to, to target these audiences to make sure that we're building and, and bridging that division maybe sometimes. Um, you know, we see it all the time in boot camp where our, you know, our our directors and our, our CIOs are saying, yes, you know, you, you should attend the boot camp uh, because it's, you know, that experience, that exposure. And just thinking in that that mindset as you're going through case studies and different components, um, thinking as that you know senior level type position and thinking more strategically as a leader. And we wanted to provide that here and be able to say, hey, we want you to start thinking you know of that next step, not necessarily being just stuck or siloed in your area, but how can we get you to the next point? Great questions, though. I'm just thinking of what we've missed all these years. So, and, and frankly, the professional level is one of them. And I think mm -hmm. we've heard a lot about that too. So, yeah. And we we now, now that we're you know finally reaching those audiences, now we're starting to say, well, when are you going to consider the you know student section? Yeah. And, and so that's like. You know, there's always a, a, a next step, a next um, entourage, but um, yes, professional, at least having that graduate level understanding and, and minimal experience um, was kind of our baseline. You know, we wanted to make sure that they, they knew a little bit more um, ground, they were a little bit more grounded in, 
you know, healthcare environment and, and policies and different things like that. Um, but yes, it's been a, a, a definitely a learning journey for all of us. Well, that's what it's all about. It's learning. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? No, I can think of at the moment. Well, you know, you can always reach out to us, Randy. You know where to find us. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll find you somehow if I need you. <laughs> Chris, did you have any questions for us? No, great presentation. Yeah, right. you, y'all, y'all did great. Well, thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your day. Take care, everyone.